Good afternoon. Today we're conducting a video presentation of the annual awards ceremony. Awards night for me and many of our faculty is one of the great highlights of the school year. So naturally it's a disappointment that we were not able to hold the ceremony in person here in the Chapel of the Holy Cross. However, this year's format does allow us to share the evening with the whole student body and our parents, perhaps setting a precedent for future ceremonies, conducting them live and recording them for those not present. Awards night is an evening when we honor students of all grade levels who have distinguished themselves in a wide variety of academic disciplines and extracurricular activities. The academic excellence of the student body, as well as your artistic creativity and talent, selfless dedication to community service, an impressive demonstration of faith in action, all find their place at the annual awards ceremony. The presentations culminate with the two highest awards, the Outstanding Underclassmen Award, traditionally bestowed on the junior whom the faculty considers to be best all around, and the Faculty Memorial Growth Award, given to the senior who has realized his potential to the greatest degree during his four years at Jesuit. For me, the most impressive aspect of the ceremony is the presentation of each award by a faculty member. The esteem and affection that our faculty has for the students shines through the tributes they pay in announcing each award. This year, we're especially grateful for the faculty members who have come together to record the presentation in the chapel, simulating the live presentations as much as possible. I hope you all enjoy this year's award ceremony and that you join me in congratulating the senior and underclassmen award winners for their fine achievements. And now you have to excuse me, I believe Mr. Newberg and the faculty are ready to go. I have to get inside and up to the sanctuary to lead the opening prayer. Thank you. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to welcome everyone to the annual awards assembly. We gather today to celebrate Jesuits' best, to honor many young men in a wide range of areas. And to the recipients, this is a much deserved recognition and it's our opportunity to congratulate you. And through this recognition, please know it's a privilege for us to work with you each and every day. I'd like now to introduce Father Richard Hermes of the Society of Jesus, President of Jesuit High School for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, you who are the author of life, the giver of all gifts, and the Father of us all, bless our Jesuit students, parents, and faculty gathered on the occasion for our annual presentation of awards. We give you thanks for the many talents these young men have displayed throughout the year in scholarship and the arts, through the Christian service of others, and in leadership, public speaking, citizenship, and athletics. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our true teacher in the art of living, Help them to learn that in using their gifts wisely and well, they give you, their creator, abundant glory. May they become more and more as they mature, true sons of St. Ignatius, seeking your divine will in all their endeavors, wherever they go. May their hearts be set on fire, and may they bring the fire of your love to all whom they encounter. Strengthen their hearts so that they become valiant witnesses of the truth of the resurrection, the truth that gives life eternal and makes your heavenly love grow in human hearts. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mr. James Uneri, Chair of the Counseling Department, will now present a number of scholar awards. Jesuit is recognized by colleges and universities as a school of excellence. Today I'm honored to present a number of awards to members of the junior class for their commitment to academic success and dedication to serving others. Our honorees are all exceptional students who have demonstrated leadership both here at Jesuit 
and in their communities. I will present each of these deserving students with a book award or certificate as a recognition for their significant accomplishments. Brandeis Award. Each year, Brandeis University awards its book award for social action and civic engagement. The award is given in, to a recognized high school junior for their commitment to political activism, social justice, and volunteer work. This year, the award is presented to Francisco Machado. Bates College. The Bates Book Award recognizes an outstanding junior pursuing academic excellence as well as exhibiting commitment beyond self through active citizenship, community service, and social responsibility. This year's honoree is Brett Litschke. Dartmouth College. The Dartmouth Book Award is presented to outstanding juniors with high moral character who have made a positive impact on the life of the school community and excelled in at least one non-academic area. This year's Dartmouth Book Award is presented to Diego Maldonado Puebla. Lemoyne College offers its College Heights Award to a junior who is reaching for the heights in the classroom and in service to their community. This year's recipient has shown a willingness to strive for excellence and give of himself to better his community through significant contributions of leadership and service. The Lemoyne Book Award is presented to Viet Ho. Princeton University offers its book award to a student who demonstrates intellectual promise, academic excellence, and exemplary service on campus and in their community, as well as outstanding personal character. Princeton is honored to present its book award to Jason Kuo. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute first presented its award in 1916 with two purposes, to recognize exceptional academic achievement and to motivate students towards careers in science, engineering, and technology. It is awarded to a student who excels in math and science courses, as well as exhibits well-rounded interests and involvement in his society. The recipient of the RPI award is Henry Gonzalez. St. Lawrence University acknowledges students who have distinguished themselves in their school community through dedication to service. This year's recipient always exceeds the minimum service requirements while seeking opportunities to better his community. We present the St. Lawrence Book Award to Alejandro Martinez. St. Michael's College recognizes a student who exhibits characteristics of an ideal St. Michael student, academic achievement, and leadership and community service endeavors. This year's recipient has performed exceptionally well in the classroom and is a dedicated servant. The St. Michael's Book Award for Academic Achievement with a Social Conscience is presented to Lucas Lehman. The Jefferson Book Award established by the University of Virginia is presented to a student considered by the faculty to be a talented scholar, leader, and citizen. This year's recipient is an asset to the classroom and the entire community. UVA is pleased to honor Chandler Carnes. The George Washington Book Award recognizes a high school junior who embodied the GW drive and spirit, specifically with their academic excellence, leadership outside the classroom, diversity of thought, and ability to put knowledge into action. The GW Book Award is presented to Daniel Jung. Father Richard Hermes, 
will now present the St. John Paul II Culture of Life Award. The St. John Paul II Culture of Life Award is rooted in the school's mission to form young men of faith who are engaged in the world and seek to, pro to promote justice within society, especially for those who are most vulnerable. This award is given annually to the student who manifests a profound belief in the inviolable dignity of human life from the moment of conception until natural death, shows consistent respect for others in daily life, and demonstrates exemplary leadership in the Jesuit High School Pro-Life Club. This year's recipient has earned the award through his tireless advocacy of the pro-life cause throughout his time at Jesuit. His dedication and preparation for the weekly club meetings and all activities, his enthusiastic participation in the annual March for Life for the fourth consecutive year, his passionate leadership in encouraging and engaging his peers on pro-life issues, and his stellar performance in a year of transition for the club, serving this past school year as club president. The 2020 recipient of the St. John Paul II Culture of Life Award is senior Trent William Alexander. Mr. Ryan Garnham, Chair of the Theology Department, will present the St. Robert Bellarmine Theology Award. The St. Robert Bellarmine Award is given to the senior who has excelled in theological inquiry, consistently achieved superlative grades in theology, and faithfully demonstrated the virtues of the Jesuit saint for whom the prize is named. St. Robert Bellarmine, an eminent scholar of the 16th century, was described as the greatest theologian of his age and an intrepid defender of the faith. His prolific theological writings are matched by the accounts of his holiness as a bishop and a cardinal. St. Robert was noted for his convincing rhetoric as he refuted objections to the Catholic Church. He was an academic powerhouse, but also a highly sought after confessor and friend to popes, priests, and the poor. The theology department has nominated to receive this award a senior who resembles St. Robert Bellarmine in many ways. Namely, he is someone whose study of the faith is coupled with his desire to live the faith. This recipient is a young man whose rigorous intellectual pursuit of the knowledge of God goes hand in hand with his personal and sincere desire to grow in love of God. One of his teachers writes, quote, Justin Bailey is an exceptional student. As a freshman, he came into theology class with a penetrating and discerning intellect. You could see that with every question, there was a desire to understand. Justin wanted to understand theology as well as its practical application. He continually grew and by the end of the year, he was passionate about knowing and living his Catholic faith." End quote. By his senior year, Justin was studying the faith on his own by listening to podcasts, reading, and having discussions with peers and teachers alike. In fact, it was not uncommon to see or hear Justin around campus engaging in impassioned theological conversation with others. Another teacher writes, quote, Justin and I have had numerous theological discussions outside of class. He reflects on and asks many challenging questions. Great conversations ensue. Then, to follow up, he does his own research, not merely by superficially searching the internet, but by digging in and reading the texts of great philosophers and doctors of the church. Justin has displayed the highest degree of self-motivation in his study of Catholic philosophy and theology not for a grade, but to satisfy his intellectual curiosity, and more importantly, to grow spiritually. This teacher goes on to say, quote, Justin has challenged me to go back to the sources of doctrine and to rethink my arguments, and thus he has made me a stronger Catholic and a sharper thinker, end quote. This year, the Theology Department proudly bestows upon Justin Bailey the St. Robert Bellarmine Award for Theology. Mrs. Denise Diaz, Chair of our Language Department, will present the Spanish Award. As a ninth grader placed in Spanish two honors, as he continued his Spanish studies with Mr. Cruz in Spanish three honors, and as a student in the AP Spanish Language and Culture class, 
he was not the most outgoing estudiante de español. That's tough in a class that requires speaking. However, his shy and quiet demeanor did not take away from all his teachers over the last four years recognizing that he was one of the most steadfast. He did his work with little fanfare, but he consistently showed progress and engagement in his studies. His hard work paid off, and he earned a four on the AP Spanish language exam as a junior. This is quite an accomplishment for a second language learner. As a senior, he challenged himself by taking AP Spanish literature, where he truly began to shine. According to Doctora Delano, he demonstrated his love for literature, history, and culture in every class meeting. He took the initiative to do his own research before class, and his efforts enriched class discussions. He would often ask for reading suggestions to expand on what was being taught in class. His dedication, kindness, enthusiasm, and intellectual curiosity made AP Spanish literature a better course. For all these reasons, we are proud to award Logan Capicelli the Spanish Award. Mr. Nick Werner and Dr. David Kofta will now present the National Latin Awards. The National Latin Exam is a test of skill taken by more than 130,000 students each year. This test measures our students' vocabulary, grammar, and reading skills, as well as their familiarity with a wide range of Roman cultural topics. A student earning an award from the National Latin Exam displays a strong understanding of Latin at their course level, and this year a total of 75 students did so. Of these award winners, the top 10% of each level in the nation have earned a Maxima Cum Laude Gold Medal Award. These are the 2020 Anna Lee Gold Medalists. In Latin one, Alexander Basio, Ryland Soriano, and Luke Turner. In Latin two, Luke Davis, Trey George, Brody Grissom, Alec Hudson, Max Jeffrey, Carter Chris, John Luca Mamola, Danny O'Leary, Zachary Reich, Dominic Rosance, Jonah Tran, and Nikki Yanni, with a perfect score by Jonah Tran. Latin three, gold medal. Adam Collins, Carter French, Viet Ho, Logan Kant, Antonio Troncoso. AP Latin, gold medal. Anthony Kirchner, Charlie Mant, Anson Rowe, Alexander Sconza, Noah Tran. Mr. Corey Perrick, Chair of the Math Department, will present the Excellence in Mathematics Award. The Excellence in Mathematics Award is given every year to the student who best exemplifies a strong work ethic, a love and enthusiasm for mathematics, and a desire to help others achieve. Our winner has earned a high A in each of his 10 semesters of math at Jesuit, including eight semesters at the AP and dual enrollment level. It has often been said by his peers that he never takes a day off from working, and it shows. Last year, along with one of the graduating seniors, our winner designed a game of Survivor based on the long-running TV show in which students had to solve a lengthy problem for immunity. Based solely on ability, our winner today could have easily won and earned a few extra credit points by doing so. Not that he needed them, but was sadly eliminated before the final round. Going into that final round, right at the end of semester one, our winner and another student still in the game were tied for first honors, an honor that our winner had never won in my class. Instead of voting against the other student in hopes that he would win his first first honors himself, he chose to vote for the student both securing that other student the victory in both Survivor and in first honors. Our winner today showed his selflessness that day and continues to do so on a daily basis. Over the three years that I have known him and had him in class, 
I've seen countless classmates of his coming to him for guidance, not only because they knew he'd have the correct answer, but also because they knew he would be happy to help them out in any way that he could. I see no better student exemplifying excellence in mathematics than the student that has made it farther in his math life a Jesuit than any student before him. On behalf of the math department, I'd like to congratulate Bennett Anderson, Excellence in Mathematics Award. This is Debbie Pacheco, Assistant Principal for Academics and Chair of the Science Department, will present the next two science awards. The annual Richard Stephen Jenkins Award for Superior Achievement in Science is named in honor of Stephen Jenkins, an alumnus from the class of 1975, who for years has demonstrated exemplary leadership in helping to advance the mission of Jesuit High School. This award is given to the senior who not only enrolled in the most challenging science courses offered at Jesuit High School, but excelled in them. With an inquisitive mind and strong analytical skills, this student continuously stood out among his peers. His intelligence in the classroom, skill in the lab, and commitment to his studies proved to the science teachers that he was very deserving of this honor. It is my pleasure to present the Richard Stephen Jenkins Award for Superior Achievement in Science to Senior Bennett Anderson. Each year, the Bosch and Lam Honorary Science Award is given to the junior who shows the most promise in the area of science. Recipients of this award are automatically considered for the Bosch and Lam Science Scholarship at the University of Rochester, a scholarship totaling $30,000 over, over four years. This year's recipient has excelled in our most rigorous science curriculum, and next year, as a senior, he will challenge himself by taking three upper-level advanced placement science classes, including the dreaded AP Chemistry and AP Science uh, Physics C, our new calc-based physics. And these will be his electives. This is a challenge rarely seen by me, but speaks volumes of his love for science. He's a straight-A student in science, has placed 99th percentile on the science portion of the ACT. The science teachers of this young man were very quick to nominate him for this award and spoke highly of his academic achievements both in the classroom and in the lab. He's also a valued member and excels in our engineering program. It is my honor to present the Bosch and Lam Honorary Science Award to Lucas Lehman. Mr. Sam Mant, Chairman of the Social Studies Department, will present the Social Studies Award. The Social Studies Award is named for Ann Connors, a member of the department for 20 years and for much of that time the head of the department. Ms. Connors was greatly admired for her depth of knowledge and her talents as a teacher. I can clearly recall in my senior year, government and economics courses with her, her enthusiasm for teaching and her ability to make the subject matter deeply engaging. Ms. Connors was also greatly admired for her passion for Jesuit High School. She had a commitment to the mission of Jesuit High School and her commitment to the mission of the school and its students was unsurpassed. She was a constant a very commanding presence. And this dedication to the school and its students and her mastery of teaching was instrumental in inspiring generations of students to become teachers themselves. This year's recipient of the Ann Connors Award has demonstrated a deep interest in social studies and it's fitting that he has expressed an interest in becoming a professor of history. It's my great pleasure to present the 2020 Ann Connors Social Studies Award to Logan Capicilli. Mr. Greg Malafronte, Chair of the English Department, will present the English Award and the SIGMEC winners. 
The Father Richard Hartnett English Award takes its name from one of the most respected and loved members of, of our community, a man who was dedicated to its service for over 50 years. The award is presented each year to the senior who best represents the skills and the qualities to which Father Hartnett devoted his teaching career. It is with great pride and confidence I announce our English Awards recipient tonight. But first, I'd like to share a few words about him from some of his very fortunate teachers. His English Two Honors teacher has said, he is always truly engaged with text meaningfully and has often proved a valuable source for class discussions. For the past two years, he's been stopping me in the hallways and coming to my room to discuss his junior and senior year content. And personally, I've taught our award winner three times during his Jesuit experience, summer enrichment as an incoming freshman, AP English language and composition as a junior, and again in AP English literature and composition as a senior. I've seen so much growth throughout his time at Jesuit. I of course noticed that he was both an excellent student and had a strong interest in the many facets of the English curriculum. But more than that, I've always been curious what he has to think about a story, a text, or an idea. Our award winner has a knack for speaking and writing with such personal voice that is uniquely his own. He wrestles with big ideas and works through the nuances of those ideas reflectively in his speech and eloquently in his writing. He's an incredibly hard worker. He's diligent and methodical without ever losing the joy and curiosity found in experiencing a story for the first time. His writing is honest, sincere, and thoughtful. He has been the English department's voice at open house for the last two years, and the sincerity, humor, and clarity of his written and spoken word has been noticed and complimented by so many in our Jesuit community. He has had a hand in shaping the department for years to come. So Charlie, it has been an absolute joy and blessing to teach you over your time at Jesuit. On behalf of the entire English department, I'm excited for your future. Today, or tonight, I proudly present the Father Richard Harden English Award to Charlie Sanders. Each year, it is the English department's goal that the St. Ignatius Gold Medal Essay Contest provide to all our students the opportunity for critical thought and profound personal reflection. This year's prompts once again follow the English department's collective vision to push students to think more creatively and more abstractly. Our students are often quite curious about our lives outside of the classroom. Whether spotting us in the wild at Publix or seeing us wearing shorts, our personal lives are the utmost interest. This year they're even able to see inside of our homes. Take advantage of this curiosity, students were presented with the English department's movie list. This year, each English teacher provided video clips that were personally significant. These range from clips from a movie about Mr. Rogers to Goodwill Hunting and Whiplash. Students were then challenged to use these prompts, a collection of personal perspectives and ideas, to create their own thoughtful and structured personal essay. The winners, whom we honor today and tonight, wrote the best essays of their entire class as judged by their teachers and a panel of judges. We are exceptionally proud of each of our winners. For his essay entitled Bon Me versus Dino Chicken Nuggets, the award for our sophomore champion goes to Jonah Tran. For his essay entitled Writing is Pain, the award for our junior champion goes to Hyatt Sabar. For his essay entitled One Last Game, the award for our freshman champion and overall underclassman St. Ignatius gold medal essay contest winner goes to Malik Shipley. And for his essay entitled Word, World of Imagination, an exit from life as an outcast, the award for our senior champion and overall upperclassman St. Ignatius gold medal essay contest winner goes to Vincent Drogenti. The Visual Arts Program Awards will be presented by the Chair of the Fine Arts Department, Mr. Kevin Ball. I suppose I'd like to start off by saying the recipient for the Best Studio One artist is not at all shocking. There's a bit of pedigree after all. His brother, unbeknownst to him, was a very gifted artist too, just a couple years ago. Regardless, the young man receiving this award stands apart like any other younger sibling or peer would like to. His work is original. It's well constructed, well pondered, and was constantly ahead of the curve, ahead of his time. Rather, it was ahead of his graduation year. There were plenty of instances that I had to correct the upperclassmen. This work 
this work that overshadowed their own in content and concept, was indeed done by a sophomore. Project after project, the knack for thoughtfulness, experimentation, and just giving it a shot was rewarded with awe and the rare more than a moment of peer reflection as it hung on the wall. He made the other artists want to be better, think harder, and change the way we see the world. Again, this is no fluke, and I hope he knows it. The recipient for the most outstanding sophomore artist is Archie Teller. Last year, I got to talk about the unlikeliness of this year's Honors Art Award winner. His peers said it was unlikely that he'd make amazing art. It was unlikely that he'd receive the award Archie just got. It was unlikely that he'd win this award today. This artist went from unlikely to sure thing pretty quickly. He produced astounding, original, and risk-taking work over and over. Work that made you wonder, made you want to examine, and made you really hungry, literally. Regardless, he doesn't rest on these achievements. What's next, Mr. Ball? What material can I slap onto this surface? His ability, his ability to be resourceful and conceptual can be summed up with what he told me after the first few weeks of working virtually. He said, Mr. Ball, this has potential. He's got the ability to change gears, accept challenges, adapt, and trust the process. This is why Michael Spack is this year's most outstanding junior artist. Don LaFontaine comes to mind when I think about the most outstanding senior artist. If you don't think you know Don, you do. He's the voice actor whose movie trailers always begin with, in a world. And then his deep, baritone voice uh, would guide you excitedly through the rest of the movie trailer. It's not a stretch. If you turn a corner and see this artist's work on the wall, you'll hear Don's voice too. The work makes you see beyond the 2D surface and into the uh, surreality uh, that he wants you to be part of. This young man makes creatures that you could swear are swimming around you even as they sit on top of the paper. He creates out-of-this-world landscapes that you can almost feel a change in the atmosphere just as you look at it, at it framed on the wall. Simply put, Vincent Giorgenti is a creator. As talented of one as any of us has had the privilege of sharing a studio with. We just know that the worlds he has synthesized on paper and in Photoshop are the worlds that we will all certainly get to know more of whether they'll be in the movies, or in video games, or in future interstellar travel. His creations are visionary and worthy of Don LaFontaine's signature opening line. I'll be proud to see him take even bigger leaps as he goes to the Ringling College of Art and Design next year. And I'm honored to award Vincent Giorgenti with the Most Outstanding Senior Artist Award. The Director's Award for Band will be presented by music teacher Ms. Nina Wegman. Hello. This year's Music Award is the John Philip Sousa Band Award. John Philip Sousa was one of the most famous American composers, the king of marches, inventor of the sousaphone for the marching band, and a great musician. This award is the pinnacle of the Music Awards. It goes to the best player in the band and the top talented student. It's always difficult to select one student as a recipient, but this year it was very obvious to select the best player in the band. This student is the vice president of the advanced band, trumpet section leader, lead trumpet player in all the school masses, and drum major of the Jesuit pep band. He spent all four years in the band, playing in the first trumpet section. He's a very serious student with a quiet but very strong character. He has dedicated so much time to the band, especially this year as the band leader. He's never missed any football games 
conducting the band at home and away games. I want to thank you for your time, your outstanding talent, and workability for all four years, and especially your senior year. The John Philip Sousa Band Award goes to Jake Greenwell. The National School Choral Award will be presented by Mr. Dominic DiCarlo, Director of the Choir. The National School Choral Award is given in recognition of singular merit, ability, and achievement, of outstanding contributions to the success of the school vocal program, and of an unusual degree of loyalty, cooperation, and high qualities of conduct. This year's recipient has been in choir since he was a sophomore. Having very little prior musical experience, he quickly came to enjoy singing as part of an ensemble, and his enthusiasm was infectious. Throughout his time in choir, he has worked tirelessly to improve both inside and outside of the classroom. This year, he has been the most active and imaginative choral student director in my time at Jesuit. He has directed the music on tr retreats, trips, pilgrimages, and at full school masses. He has chosen musical selections for the choir and constantly worked to raise the musicianship and pride of the ensemble. He leads by example, and both his voice and leadership will be missed. This year's recipient of the National School Choral Award is Oscar Lopez. The award for theater arts will be presented by Mr. Richard Miller, moderator and director of the Jesuit Mask. The St. Genesius Award for Theater Arts is bestowed on seniors whose talent, leadership, and dedication have had a substantial impact on the theater program throughout their time at Jesuit. Recipients demonstrate a passion for theater and a drive to make each production as good as it can be. These are the artists upon whom a theater program depends, and their impact is formative and lasting. Since this year's seniors joined the mask, they have helped raise expectations for dedication, creativity, and leadership. They quickly became the leadership and creative core of the Jesuit theater program. There's no question that losing more than a dozen students who have been deeply involved in every theatrical endeavor Jesuit has undertaken for four years is a setback. Fortunately, the seniors have helped form the students who are taking the helm. Working with this group of seniors has been a singular experience for me in my career, and I wanted to acknowledge their profound impact on the growth and development of Jesuit theater. That said, the Genesius Award is given to one student. To select one student from such an influential group was something of a challenge, but this year's recipient has distinguished himself in a number of ways, most notably in his accomplishments on stage. Since being the only freshman cast in his first play at Jesuit, he has taken the Jesuit stage by storm. He's played a musketeer, a shady journalist, an idealistic lawyer, a disillusioned dreamer, and a shepherd so stupid he couldn't remember his own name. In district competition, he amassed eight superiors, one all-star cast, and two top honors awards to go with the first two superiors at state by a Jesuit performer. He's the first Jesuit thespian to qualify for state as a freshman, the first Jesuit performer to earn top honors, the first Jesuit thespian to earn multiple top honors, the first Jesuit thespian to qualify for state all four years, and the first Jesuit thespian to earn multiple superiors at the state level. His performances are honest, powerful, and compelling, shaped by a deep understanding of his character and a strong instinct for internalizing the words on the page. In layman's terms, he's able to become the character to such an extent that as you slip into the world of the play, you forget you're watching an actor. But just as important as his ability is his commitment. He served as an officer in the mask for the last two years. He's the first Genesius Award recipient in recent memory to have participated in all eight main stage productions during his time at Jesuit, not to mention three one-act plays. His questions about characterization reflect a deep desire to grow in his craft, and his willingness to own up to his own failings often helped keep him and others grounded and motivated to improve. Unfortunately, the swan song for this young man and his outstanding fellow seniors was cut short. 
The pandemic caused cancellation of Romeo and Juliet, ruined what was shaping up to be a compelling showcase of their talents on and off the stage and a fitting coda to a remarkable four years. If ever there was a senior class that deserved such a send-off, it was this one. And if ever there was a student actor who deserved to end his high school theater career playing such an iconic role, it was this one. As he moves on to study filmmaking, I say to him again, if he doesn't continue acting on stage or on the screen, it's everyone's loss. It is my pleasure and great honor to give the 2020 St. Genesius Award for Theater Arts to Riley Buchanan. The Excellence in Media Production Award will be presented by Mr. Mark Lennox, Instructor of Digital Communication. The Excellence in Media Production Award is given to the student who goes beyond the general scope of converging media to become a true digital storyteller. In these strange times, you don't have to look very far to find despair. It tends to be in bundles in the lowest hanging fruit, and rightfully so. This student always found an alternative, and a genuine alternative. The art of a true digital storyteller is someone who embraces that, sees things through a different lens, and has the talent and ability to view and present in a way that evokes something in us. This student entered my class with all the right tools and was ready to embrace direction. And the growth and maturity that took place over this last school year was remarkable. His videos were often featured on all platforms of Jesuit social media. His sports hype videos went viral the minute they were published. His hard work and dedication to his craft is unmatched by any student I've ever had in, in digital media. That's why it is an honor to present the Excellence in Media Production Award to Riley Martin. Athletic Director Terry Rupp will now present the Jack O'Connell Award on behalf of the Athletic Department. The O'Connell Award is named after legendary coach Jack O'Connell, who was Jesuit's head coach for both the football and baseball teams in the mid-50s into the early 60s. Coach O'Connell, known as a fiery guy, propelled the Jesuit football program into area prominence in 1958 when the Jesuit football team finished with a record of 8-1. At the time, this was the best season in school history since joining the Florida High School Athletic Association in 1933. The O'Connell Award is an honor given to a senior who letters and excels in two varsity sports while maintaining high academic standards in the classroom. This year's recipient lettered in basketball and track while earning a 4.63 GPA and will attend University of Florida this fall. It is my privilege to announce Bennett Anderson as the recipient of the 2020 Jack O'Connell Award. The St. Peter Claver Service Award will be presented by Mr. Andy Wood, Director of Community Service. The St. Peter Claver Award is given annually to the student from each grade level who completes the greatest number of service hours that respective year. It is given in the honor of the Sp Spanish Jesuit missionary Peter Claver, who is considered to be a heroic example of what should be the Christian practice of love and the exercise of human rights. Peter Claver was known for caring for those arriving on the slave ships who had been mistreated and neglected. He ministered in the port city of Cartagena for over 40 years before his death in 1654. Peter Claver was canonized in 1888 by Pope Leo XIII and to this day still stands as a symbol of missionary works. The St. Peter Claver Award recognizes those students who embody the mission of Peter Claver and in turn Jesuit High School. Matthew used to Venice has completed 330 hours of service during his senior year spending his summer working at the Mary Help Christian Camp serving the youth by bringing faith and fun together in the spirit of St. John Bosco, the founder of the Salesian Order. This is his third year that he has won the St. Peter Claver Award, so please join me in congratulating Matthew Eusebius for his tremendous service to others and for being the St. Peter Claver Award recipient for the senior class. Edward Morrison. This is Edward's first St. Peter Claver Award recognition as he has completed 396 hours of service during his junior year. 
Edward spent the summer working with the Summer Bridge Program at Jesuit and has ministered to the youth of Tampa Bay at his local church. Edward also went on a mission trip to Lagos, Nigeria, where he was able to have, as he called it, a transformational experience. Please join me in congratulating Edward Morrison for his tremendous service to others and for being the St. Peter Claver Award recipient for the junior class. Matthew Justin has completed 247 hours of service during his sophomore year doing a variety of service projects. This young man is by far one of the most well-rounded volunteers as he had volunteered all over Tampa Bay. He has done service at the St. Pete Theater, the McDonald's Training Center, the Kiwanis Club, Tampa's annual pig jig, Jesuits Thanksgiving basket drive, and the St. Lawrence Day of Service, just to name a few. This is Matthew's second year as the St. Peter Claver Award recipient, and I predict it will not be his last. Congratulations, Matthew, on being the sophomore recipient of the St. Peter Claver Award, and I look forward to seeing all the service projects you will accomplish in your future. Matthew Dolan has completed 123 hours of service during his freshman year. Matthew spent a week during his summer in Washington State at Camp Agape Northwest, a camp that serves children facing cancer, where he served as a camp counselor working one-on-one -on -one with a cancer patient. Throughout the year, Matthew continued to serve in projects such as Cross Out Cancer, the Ronald McDonald House, and working with the migrant children in Plant City. Please join me in congratulating Matthew Dolan on being the freshman recipient of the St. Peter Claver Award. The National Merit Finalist Awards will be presented by Assistant Principal for Academics, Mrs. Debbie Pacheco. Each year, the National Merit Scholarship Program recognizes and honors the most academically talented students in the United States. Jesuit High School is very proud to announce that nine of our students have merited this honor and therefore the title of National Merit Scholar Finalist. Students enter the National Merit Scholarship Program by taking the preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, otherwise known as the PSAT, which screens approximately 1.6 million juniors from across the nation. Of the 1.6 million entrants, only 50,000 with the highest scores in reading, writing, and mathematics qualify for this recognition. About 16,000, approximately 1%, will be notified that they have qualified as semifinalists. They are the highest scoring entrants in each state. The National Merit Scholar finalists are chosen from this 1%. In addition to their test scores, the finalists must also show a commitment to leadership, service, and continued excellence in academics. Today we are very proud to recognize these nine recipients. Bennett Anderson, Christopher Browie, Spencer Farfante, Anthony Kirshner, Mark Rumsey, Andy Seebeck, Alexander Sconza, Colin Talbot, and Giovanni Taylor. It's my privilege to present our final two awards. Our next award, the Faculty Memorial Growth Award, reveals our goal in our work as Jesuit educators. Our efforts focus on the growth and development of our students in all aspects of their formation. The next award recognizes a member of the senior class through his four years at Jesuit High School as being a man open to growth. The Faculty Memorial Growth Award was instituted at the request of the students. 
to honor the memory of deceased faculty who have touched their lives. This award is determined by a vote of the faculty and is presented to the senior who since freshman year has demonstrated the most growth intellectually, personally, and spiritually, and who exhibits potential for continued growth and development in college and beyond. I'd like to read comments from a nominating faculty member. This young man has grown as a person and in his faith. He has ventured out as a member of choir, assisting in campus ministry, and taken on leadership positions in extracurriculars. He has taken to heart guidance from teachers that care about him. He has taken full advantage of the opportunities Jesuit has presented him and now graduates as one of the truly outstanding scholars and leaders in his class. The recipient of the Faculty Memorial Growth Award is Oscar Lopez. It's important at the end of the year to ask faculty to step back, pause, and take time to offer their input on identifying the most outstanding underclassmen from this incredibly talented pool of a Jesuit student body. The Outstanding Underclassmen of the Year Award is presented to the underclassmen that shows evidence of leadership within the school, performs well academically, presents no discipline problems, participates in extracurricular activities, and exemplifies Christian values by his example and service to others. Comments from a nominating faculty member. This individual is an exemplary student that embodies everything we hope to see in a young man. He's always congenial and goes above and beyond. He's a selfless person that leads by example, devoting countless hours of service to others. His academic achievements are second to none. He never seeks attention and quietly goes about his responsibilities. He is one of the most respected students in our school. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to present this year's outstanding underclassmen award to Jimmy Gramig. As we come to the conclusion of our annual awards assembly, I again want our recipients to know how proud of you we are of what you've accomplished and the many contributions you've made to our community. No doubt well deserved, your ability, your initiative, your efforts, hard work, and sacrifices. But I would ask that you please give some thought to two, con two factors that greatly contribute to this. That would be one, your home life. The support, the encouragement you receive from your families. You're very blessed to have a home life that encourages and supports you in all your endeavors. And secondly, the school environment, the Jesuit faculty highly professional, dedicated educators that work tirelessly to offer you the best experience possible. Endless devotion to you. And on behalf of the students, parents, and school administration, I want to thank the faculty for the great care to our students and to their parents. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.